Who do you think did the most for the business? Hulk Hogan. And I think that anybody in wrestling right now would tell you that. Like wrestling had the the surge of popularity in the 80s into the 90s because of Hulkamania. Like Hulk Hogan slamming Andre the Giant at WrestleMania 3 was a big turning point for wrestling going from like this silly thing that people didn't really watch and talk about to being this very popular thing. So it's Hulk Hogan for sure. You remember watching that? I didn't watch that. I didn't watch that live. I would have been three years old when oh. that happened. No, I didn't watch that live. And Wrestle WrestleMania came to the Sky Dome when I was six. I wasn't a huge wrestling fan at that time. It was really the attitude era that I got into it. But then you go back and you start to understand like the importance of like, oh, because yeah, I'm 16. Hogan would have been in his late 40s at the time. You understand the importance of what Hogan was doing in WCW, but you didn't really get it because you didn't, you know, I didn't really see everything he did before that. But when you start to get an appreciation for like, oh, that's why he's the guy and he's in the spot that he's in right now. It just really makes you appreciate it. It's very similar now to like how a new wrestling fan or a younger wrestling fan might view Chris Jericho. They might just be seeing the work he's been doing the last five years in AEW and not quite fully grasp it. But then when you see everything he did as Lionheart and Y2J and Suit and Tie Guy Jericho and the List Jericho and then the Pain Maker and everything else and you get a full scope of everything he's done, you go, oh, yeah, no, I can appreciate that now. Who would you say is the most underrated wrestler? Of all time? In the past 20 years. In the past 20 years, the most underrated wrestler of all time. There's so many. Shelton Benjamin's a big one. Like Shelton Benjamin's one of the greatest athletes in the history of pro wrestling. The, the things that guy can do and make them look so easy is unbelievable. And the fact that that guy never won a world championship in WWE, like, it just doesn't sit right with me. So that's one for sure. I think Dolph Ziggler, he was, spent 19 years in WWE. And while he did win world championships there, I think that people really underappreciate how good he was at making other people look good. Like that's, that's a real sign of a great wrestler. Not how great you can look when you're out there. How great can you make your opponent look? How great are you at putting them over when they're winning a match? So those are two that immediately pop into my head right now. Do you think Ric Flair was one of the best sellers? Oh, yeah. Ric Flair is great selling. Triple H sells so well. Brock Lesnar is a fantastic seller. The way Brock Lesnar sells punches... And you know you got to remember he's six three and two hundred ninety five pounds. He doesn't need to be selling for anybody. The way that guy sells is fantastic. Where do you see wrestling going in the next five years, especially with this new switch from Raw to Netflix and SmackDown to USA? It's going to be really interesting. We're on the cusp right now. I feel like of wrestling, just it gets more popular every week. And more people are watching and more new fans are coming in and more lapsed fans are coming back to wrestling. This Netflix deal is not only important for wrestling. This is an important deal for like traditional broadcasting in general. The fact that Netflix was willing to spend $5 billion on a weekly live television program means that they've put a big investment into WWE. Like figuratively and literally. Like it's a big investment of their, their time and their resources. Netflix doesn't do live weekly programming. So the fact that they're going to do 52 weeks of live weekly, weekly programming is really interesting. For the next 10 years, no? Five. Five years. It's going to be interesting because I think that a lot of other people are going to be looking at that. Oh, if live programming can work on a streamer and we're Amazon Prime or HBO Max or something like that, maybe we should be taking notice of this. And Prime did that. You know, Thursday Night Football has been successful for them. Right. They also had the Black Friday game last year, which was very successful for them. But can weekly live programming work? I mean, yeah, I think it'll absolutely work. It just goes to show it really does go in those waves. Absolutely. Streaming, back to week. We'll see. And what's going to be interesting about going to Netflix is, will there be commercial breaks? I don't think so. So what are they going to do in between matches? Well, they do it on PLEs, right? They cut to a promo package. They cut to backstage. They cut to a WWE shop So you're commercial. really going to be getting three hours of nonstop this action? This is the other thing. Is it going to be three hours? There was a lot, there's a lot of questions, right? Because when does this all start? January? January. Because if, if you and I pay for the ad-free version of Netflix 
And then we tune into the live streaming version of Raw on a Monday night, and they're giving us ads. I feel like we're going to be upset about that. They're going to need some people to fill in those uh, five-minute gaps, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I, th- I know what you're saying. Uh, I'm I, picking I up what it. you're putting down here. Uh, are you, do you smell what I'm cooking? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think it's, it's going to be very, very interesting. Also... It's not regulated in the same way that traditional broadcasting is. Right. Are they going to get more Attitude Era? This is the thing. And that's a fine line to walk, right? Because for so long, for the last 15 plus years, they've been trying to get newer, younger fans. They've been trying to make this more of a global product. Well, if my six or seven or eight-year-old loves wrestling, when The Rock comes on, and especially the promos he's been cutting on Instagram, I'd be like... I don't know if I want The Rock, like... You know, Shut up, yeah. bitch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dropping all these F-bombs too, right? I don't want my little kid running around the playground yelling, Shut up, bitch at people. That was the best when we would wrestle in the playground behind where the lunch <laughs> ladies couldn't see us. Are you kidding me? Bring running it back. around telling everyone to suck it. <laughs> I'll never forget this kid named Ryan just going to everybody because <laughs> he loves Stone Cold. And I wonder if we're going to get that because... This will not be regulated in the same way on Netflix. So then the decision comes down to Netflix and TKO. Like, what are the decisions that they want to make? Is Netflix going to say, you know what, guys, let's tone this down. Let's make this a little bit more PG. Or is TKO going to say like, hey, let's try to you know make this a show for everybody. Or are they going to go, boy, we had a lot of success when it was TVMA or TV14. I feel like it'll be that because UFC is like pretty crazy ufc caters to a totally different audience though but but the parent company no it's the same parent company but it's only been the same parent company for a handful of months so it'll it'll be very interesting and i think a lot of people will be watching to see how this is handled wwe i don't think enough people give them credit they've been ahead of the curve for a long time they were one of the very first to have their own streaming network the wwe network when really nobody else was even thinking about that as an option they were also the first to sell their streaming network to Peacock and go, yeah, if you're going to give us a billion dollars for this, I think it was, we'll go do our own thing and figure something else out. So I feel like a lot of people are watching to see what they're doing. So does Peacock have all those old matches? Everything. Yeah, it's basically the WWE Network on Peacock. And then Raw will just be the new weekly on Netflix. On Netflix, yeah. And then SmackDown goes to the CW? I thought USA. USA. Oh, yeah, that's right. USA. Uh, NXT goes to the CW. What are your thoughts on Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson? That's going to be so interesting. Thank you. I think it's going to be incredible. It's going to be so interesting. And nobody's talking about this. It's free on Netflix. Another live streaming. Another massive live streaming event free with your Netflix subscription. It's going to be the biggest fight of all time. It's it's certainly going to have a lot of people watching. Right? Do you think it'll be the biggest ever? Well, I think it I will. guess it depends on what the metric is that we're judging this by. We're judging it by the most eyes watching it, which is on Netflix that everybody has. Yeah. And it's free. I, I don't I don't know what the biggest fight, you know, up to this point is, but I know a lot of people are gonna be watching this. Neither I don't, do I. I just like spitting out random facts. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they're gonna put eighty thousand people in uh AT and T Stadium. I don't know if that's gonna happen. I don't know about that I'd probably be, won't either. I'd be blown away if they could do that. But the amount of people that will see the fight, I think, is gonna be astronomical. I really think that this is a lose lose situation for Jake Paul though. I agree. <laughs> like, Have you seen Mike Tyson? <laughs> but but it's lose lose, right? Because if if he beats him, it's oh, you beat a guy who's gonna be fifty eight years old at that time. Oh, I disagree. Big, big deal. I would give him so much credit if he beat Mike Tyson because he's still Mike Tyson. But he's a 58-year-old Mike Tyson. Regardless, he's still a killer. Yeah, yes, absolutely. And he will always have that in him. But I, I think it's lose-lose because you beat him, you beat a 58-year-old man who at one point in time was the baddest man on the planet. If you lose, you've now lost to a 58-year-old man. So it's like it's lose-lose here, I think. I so disagree because I can't imagine that many people really getting in the ring with Mike Tyson. The only thing that makes sense is Mike Tyson's last fight. I almost feel like he went a little soft on when he was fighting. Roy Jones Jr.? Yeah, they both didn't give 100%. That was an exhibition. Exactly. Yeah. Is this going to be on the record? I don't know. That's a great question. Because if it's another exhibition, then it's like, are they real? They're probably just doing it for the money, obviously. The thing that you have to respect about Jake Paul, whether you love him or you hate him, he's bringing so many new eyes to boxing. And he's bringing so many new eyes to just 
combat sports in general. And he's also putting a lot of pressure on Dana White. He's saying, Dana White, how come I'm able to pay your fighters more in one fight than you paid them in their entire UFC career? Something is something needs to change here. And I, whether you love him or you hate him, you have to respect the fact that he's putting that pressure on Dana White to pay his fighters better. As a longtime wrestling fan, what's your thoughts on Logan Paul joining WWE? Logan Paul is he's crushing it. And these are Triple H's words, and they ring so true. He has no business being as good as he is. He's had what, like eight matches? And every single match, he looks like he's been doing this for 10, 15, 20 years. He also does something in every match that makes you remember him. Like he has that moment in every single match that you remember when the show's over. You might not remember all the matches on the card, but you remember that one moment. You remember that spot in the Royal Rumble where him and Ricochet meet in the middle, right? You remember the elbow off the top rope with the selfie camera to Roman Reigns. You remember these moments. And whether you love Logan Paul or you hate Logan Paul, he's doing his job. He's making you feel. Because at the end of the day, that's what wrestling's all about. Wrestling is all about making you feel something. So I have a tremendous amount of respect for him for not only coming into the WWE and being able to hang, but for coming into the WWE and treating it as seriously as he's been treating it. Like, this is not just some side quest for him. Like, he is a WWE superstar, whether you like it or not. He's a WWE superstar, and every single time he goes out there, he proves a lot of his doubters and a lot of his haters wrong because they all want him to fail. And he goes out there and his promos are solid. His ring work is solid. And again, you're, whether you're booing him or you're cheering him, he's getting you to feel something.